Welcome, and happy feast day, sisters, associates in mission, partners in mission, friends. Welcome, Tari, thanks for being here to celebrate with us. And welcome, musicians, thank you for being here with us and for all you always do to just make our celebrations even brighter. Thank you. We are all here to celebrate our life together in God, for God, for love. The life of our sweet Saint Joseph, as my mother always called him, our sweet Saint Joseph certainly is an example of a desire to live God's love. And so thank you for being here and for all of your efforts to live God's love, to live the mission. Happy St. Joseph's Day. I invite you please to stand and we'll begin our celebration singing the just one and you'll recognize the melody right away so really sing it and celebrate there but that's got to be significant well it's so good to be here what a wonderful day to to celebrate with all of you today as we gather here on this feast of saint joseph so we begin as we begin all things in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Amen. grace and peace from our loving and our gracious god be with all of you as we gather today, let us take a moment now to be mindful of our God's presence here among us and the God who dwells within us as we ask God to bestow mercy upon us.
You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those who are in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Loving God, grant that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. That night, the word of God came to Nathan and said, Go and tell my servant David, When your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you. Your successor will come from your own body and I will establish your dynasty. It is you who will build a temple to honor my name, 
and I will establish your throne for an eternal dominion. I will be mother and father to you, and you will be my child. Your family and your dynasty will last forever. The word of God. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The promise made to Sarah and Abraham and their descendants that they would inherit the world did not depend on the law. It was made in view of the righteousness that comes from faith. Hence, everything depends on faith. Everything is grace. Thus, the promise holds true for all of Sarah's and Abraham's descendants, not only for those who have the law, but for all who have their faith. They are the mother and father of us all, which is why scripture says, I will make you the parents of many nations, all of which is done in the sight of God in whom they believed, the God who restores the dead to life and calls into being things that don't exist. Hoping against hope, Sarah and Abraham believed and so became the mother and father of many nations, just as it was once promised them. Numerous as this will your descendants be. Thus, Sarah and Abraham's faith was credited to them as righteousness. The word of the Lord. So God, they sing your praise forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. It was of her that Jesus, who is called the Christ, was born. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph being a person of honor and not wanting to disgrace Mary, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was Joseph's intention when suddenly the angel of God appeared in a dream and said, Joseph, don't be afraid to wed Mary. It is by the Holy Spirit that she has conceived this child. She is to have a son and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save the people from their sin. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of God had directed him. The good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus.
It's a long walk up here. <laughs> but my friend Fung gave me the thumbs up as I, as I approached. Well, good afternoon to all. And happy feast day, sisters, associates, partners in mission, and friends. It's good that we can gather together to celebrate dear St. Joseph, just, humble, loving, kind, selfless husband, protective father, and as a first grade student wisely exclaimed, he's a great guy. <laughs> How blessed are we to have Joseph as our patron. The themes in the readings for today remind us of unexpected messages, promises made, and hope embraced. In today's gospel, we meet Joseph when his life is turned upside down, betrothed to Mary, shocked by the news that she's expecting a child that isn't his own, and asked to believe the unbelievable. He's willing to divorce her quietly and forgo his own hopes for the life he had envisioned. Then he's visited by an angel who tells him not to be afraid and explains that he has to chart another course. Joseph faces his fears, gives up his own plans, marries Mary, and believes that she is carrying the Son of God. Now, if all this isn't enough for a heart to hold, we know what happens next. A law demands that Joseph leave Nazareth and return to his ancestral home. The timing couldn't be worse. But Joseph packs up Mary and begins the journey to Bethlehem. As we know so well, once they arrive, he searches for a safe place for the baby to be born, dependent on the kindness of strangers. Until recently, I foolishly considered this to be a sweet, simple, and uncomplicated story, rather than the extraordinary account of a man of deep faith, who was also a man of creative courage, as Pope Francis suggests because his life was filled with difficulties and challenges, yet in each situation, he listened to his heart, trusted in God, and found ways to overcome the obstacles in his path. I came to a new understanding of our patron this past Christmas Eve, when I met the faith-filled, hopeful, and courageous Joseph. You might recall that Christmas Eve was a frigid day I can't remember a colder one. It was a day that I had the great privilege of being among the volunteers who gathered very early in freezing temperatures to welcome the asylum seekers who traveled from Texas on buses destined for Philadelphia, a sanctuary city. In the darkness and cold, we waited anxiously for the buses to arrive. And as soon as they did, our dear neighbors disembarked from the Texas bus clad only in the summer clothes of their homeland. We greeted them and quickly offered them blankets for warmth and to bundle the babies and the young children as we ushered them onto the awaiting heated septa bus. Once our friends were seated, the volunteers moved among them, offering words of welcome and comfort, as well as hot coffee and snacks. Their emotions varied from fear to relief. Very slowly and gently, smiles began to appear on their frightened faces as we distributed whatever warm clothing we had to offer. Over and over again, I heard these travelers say, thank you, thank God, thank God we're here. Slowly, they began to share their stories. We didn't want to leave. We didn't have a choice. We weren't safe. There was too much violence. I was afraid for my family. We had to leave our country. The litany went on and on. Like our patron, they were frightened by their realities of their life and their dream to pursue a better life. They faced their fears, called forth their hope, courage, and trust in God, and when the moment was right, they fled, praying that the strangers along the way would be kind. Being, this, being with these dear neighbors was a sacred experience for me. How fitting that on Christmas Eve, 
I was blessed to meet Joseph. Joseph from Honduras, Joseph from Guatemala, from Cuba, from Mexico, and even a holy family from Ecuador. Who, all who traveled to Philadelphia, not Bethlehem, who found shelter on a heated septic bus, not in a stable, and who found kindness in a few volunteers, not an innkeeper. <laughs> Meeting them was an unexpected blessing. Thanks to these Josephs, I will never think of our Joseph in the same way. They gave me a glimpse of what our Joseph experienced when he faced the difficulties and challenges in his own life, and how with trust in God, he was able to face his fears, and with creative courage, he found ways to overcome those obstacles. With new eyes and with great joy, I can now echo the words of my first grade friend, Joseph truly is a great guy. So today as we celebrate our patron, let all of us, sisters, associates, partners in mission, and friends, go to Joseph to ask him to be with us when we're disappointed or frightened, to inspire us to open our minds and hearts to the unexpected opportunities and challenges of each day, to urge us to claim our own creative courage as we pursue our dreams, to remind us that God is always with us on our journeys, and to encourage us to pray that those we meet along the way will greet us with kindness and generosity as we in turn greet them in the same way. Happy Feast Day. Sisters, as women of the church, we discover in the gospel message and in our constitutions the call to the radical following of Jesus in mission and for mission. This giving of self in love to Christ and the apostolic charity which flows from this union is expressed in and through the vows which we now freely renew. My God, I renew my eyes of chastity, poverty, and obedience, hoping with your divine grace to observe them faithfully all my life. And our associates, as an associate in, in mission of the Sisters of St. Joseph, relying on the grace of God, I recommit myself to our mission of unity, holding in daily prayer and living a life of active, inclusive love with the dear neighbor wherever I am. And so guided by the intercession of St. Joseph, we offer our prayers now and our concerns this night. There will be a, a silent response. For Pope Francis,
for all who hold le roles of leadership in the church and in society. For the safety of all immigrants and refugees looking for a new home. for children who fear for their lives. For all who will die alone this night. For the preservation of our earth. God of surprises. You called Joseph and Mary to parenthood in the most unlikely of ways. Your wisdom knows no bounds. Receive our prayers that through the witness of St. Joseph, we might grow in faithfulness and trust. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to our loving God. Please stand. Amen. 
We pray, O oh God, that just as Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We do not to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the solemnity of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise you. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. And so may our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. seated. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when it's once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, gracious God, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ has been handed on to us. 
and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And bring your church, O oh God, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our hearts and our eyes to the needs of all of our sisters and brothers. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Jesus and at his command. And may your church always stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember all of our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. For through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So we pray now for the coming of the reign of God here on earth, as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety and distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you also. May we share the Lord's peace.
of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Please be seated. invite us now to join in our communion meditation, Glorious Father. Let us pray. Grant us your unfailing protection, O God. Protect the family that you have nourished with food from this altar as we rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Let us bow our heads now and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. 
May the Lord let his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. Amen. And may the Lord, Lord look upon all of us with kindness Amen. and fill our hearts, our homes, and our world with God's peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. We go in peace now to love and to serve our God. Thanks, God.